live. this one going too if you want. Okay. There you go. Oh sweet. Sweet one. Good. It's a cushy jab. Saxophones, pads, clarinet pads. Professional saxophone players should know about this. Max works. Saxophone equipment, summer. Okay. Just gave him a thumbs up. Let him know we're still here. It's live. It's not pre recorded. Why would anybody pre-record this? <laughs> All right. Oh, I like this. Yeah, yeah. I can kind of see it. Music medic. <laughs> Music medic. And then a special surprise because we missed it. What was the title of our Wednesday video? Oh, okay, uh, right. They were supposed uh, to tune in at 10 a.m. for... at 10 a.m. for a 10 um, tenor talk TCB and... 10 That's right. If you can say it 10 times fast, well, then you're better than us. So. Yeah. All right. Well, I, let's get started, Ryan. Um, everybody's just going to see my hands. That's right. This video. For, it's like uh, up close magic. So, good afternoon, everybody. It's Friday, and we've got a couple of emails and requests asking about some of our woodland pads. So, I wanted to kind of go over everything that we have. Uh, so far this year, and one of the things that we made new, uh, or a couple of the pads that we made new that you may not have seen. So at any point, if you haven't seen uh, one of these pads in your hands and you'd like a sample of them, feel free to uh, shout at us with a, a comment or uh, a message or an email, and I'll be happy to ship you off uh, a sample of the pad you haven't seen today. Um, so let's get right into it. Uh, the first thing I'm going to talk about is our clarinet pads. So these are our uh, traditional style clarinet pads. They all have a, a double bladder skin and a, a chipboard backing. The first one is a woven clarinet pad. This has got about a 3.1 millimeter thickness. This is a 16.5. I think all of these are 16.5s. And it's got a kind of softer woven felt, a fairly square shoulder for being as flexible a felt as it is. And these pads usually go into rental instruments or uh, student instruments, and they're fairly forgiving. The next up from that is uh, the same size in a pressed uh, felt. So this is double bladder uh, with 1.2 millimeter pressed felt. And this has a nice square shoulder that's going to sit up on top of the uh, pad cup for you. And a lot of technicians will use these in uh, professional instruments or student instruments or everything in between. So they're a great all-around pad with around a 3.1 millimeter thickness. And that's the uh, medium uh, pressed felt clarinet pad. And then we also have the same available in a thin pressed. So just a thinner pressed felt. Um, and this is kind of, if you're looking for a little uh, thinner, thinner. I think these are slightly thinner. Um, we also, and so we have two pressed felt, a medium pressed felt and a thin pressed felt. And then from there, uh, over the years we've got uh, requests for pads that are similar to say a Gore-Tex pad or a non-stick clarinet pad. And so we developed uh, the Rue pad for clarinet and that pad is basically a press felt clarinet pad. So this has a, a press felt bladder underneath and then we wrap it in uh, rue leather. And this pad has a great feel when it hits the tone hole. 
It's fairly quiet, non-stick, and has a nice feel for uh, professional musicians. A lot of them will get this in the lower joint and maybe use synthetics or uh, cork in the upper joint. So we have those available in the white root pad and then also in the black. So that's the black and the white root pad for clarinet. We also have a, uh, a thicker, this is probably around a 3.2 to 3.5 millimeter uh, bass clarinet pad. So this is a root pad for bass clarinet. And this is a fairly firm pad with a press felt. And then we also have a bass clarinet pad uh, in the traditional tan leather. And one of the newer pads that we came out with this year was a uh, bassoon pad. So our bassoon pads are, now I know there's a lot of professional bassoon repair technicians who just make their own pads because the nature of the bassoon is so wonky. But we, we did want to have a kind of pad that you could stock in your bin if you have a bunch of, uh, you know, if you have a rental fleet or if you just need something to, st as a, to start with. So this is a, a bassoon pad that is root pads for bassoon. It has the nonstick roux leather, a soft woven felt with a uh, flexible backing. So you can mash these pads and distort them as you need to for bassoon repair. These have about a three, 3.1 millimeter thickness. And I know that these are fairly popular for fox bassoons. So if you're doing a bunch of, uh, you know, uh, rental returns, this is a good go-to pad for, to have in your bin. And let's move over to the flute before we get to the saxophones. Um, this, the flute pads that we have, these guys, these three right here are double skin yellow pads. They come in three different thicknesses. They're fairly soft and forgiving. Uh, they're well made. They're fairly square as far as the way that the felt sits on the cardboard. So the guys in the pad room really do a nice job making these. They're an inexpensive pad. They function well and they're easy to adjust for the most part. And so we have these in a 2.9, a 2.7 millimeter thickness. And then uh, I think this is the 2.7, this is, and then a 2.5 millimeter thickness. And one of the new additions that we did uh, recently was to add a white version. So we have the double yellow skin bladder woven felt in three different thicknesses for flute. And this is mostly going to be the 2.9 is going to what you're going to see on like student flutes. And then if you have an intermediate flute and you need a different thickness, we've got a 2.7 and 2.5. And we also have this in white. So if you have a rental instrument and you need to, or a school instrument, and you need to replace a white pad, we've got these on the site and ready to go. Now for step up instruments, we do have a pressed felt flute pad and this pad is 2.5 millimeters in thickness. It has a nice square press felt, and this is a fairly firm pad, and for the price, this is an excellent little pad to put in your step-up instruments. And so that's what we have for flute for now. And then for piccolo, we've got a double yellow skin bladder flute pad. This is, I believe, I think we have them in woven felt, but we also have them in press felt um, and this has got two layers of bladder they're about 2.1 to 2.5 millimeters in thickness and we also have those available in white i don't think the white piccolo pads are on the website but we do make them as a special order item and that's something if you need a white piccolo pad it's going to be something that's really easy for us to make and get to you quickly now we also have a roux pad for piccolo, which is a killer little pad. It's got the press felt. It has a super square shoulder. They're fairly firm. They go into metal instruments really well, and kids love them. So this is a pad that is becoming increasingly more popular with uh, technicians. And if you have an instrument that you'd like to try a, uh, a roux pad for piccolo, feel free to reach out to us either by a comment here or, um, a message or you can send us an email and if you'd like to see a sample of these uh, just let us know so again for those of you who are just tuning in we're just kind of going over uh, kind of the broad spectrum of pads that we offer here so if you guys 
see a pad here that you haven't seen before or have had in your hand or put it into an instrument, feel free to, um, <clears throat> to give us a message, a comment, uh, or an email, and I'll be happy to send you a sample of any of these pads that we're showing today. All right, so let's move on to the saxophone pads. We have three uh, styles of tan leather saxophone pads. Now, we're not gonna talk about resonators today. We did a different video uh, about resonators and their function and the different ways to install resonators. So you can check out our other videos on resonators. Um, all of our pads are stocked uh, with a three, three millimeter center hole. So <clears throat> they'll fit any sort of standard metal resonator easily. If you're installing plastic resonators, you can request these with a four millimeter hole because that's what you're going to need for a plastic rezzo and um, we can punch that for you or if you're ordering in sets just and you're ordering with no resonator just request the four millimeter hole so for the tan leather pads you know just a word about our leather too um, our tan leather is finished a little differently than other tan leathers from our competitors so at the, at the tannery, we generally uh, put the finishing material on in kind of a slow batch, <coughs> uh, slow spray of paint to paint the leather. And we do it in slow batches and let the material soak into the leather. So uh, what we get from our pads is a finish that has more of a uh, matte style finish it's not super shiny. That's because there hasn't been paint just sprayed uh, hard and thick onto the surface of the pad before it moves into an oven. So we let the, the, the finishing material, the paint, uh, sit on the pad, let it soak in, and then we'll do it again before the pad moves on. So the pad leather moves on. So these pads have a more of a matte finish, but they also, the great benefit of that is, is they don't stick as much. Um, I'm not saying that these pads will never stick, but you're certainly going to be doing a lot better with these tan pads as far as um, them sticking less than uh, just a kind of a traditional, more orange color uh, pad leather that you might see. So we have got a couple of different felts that go on our tan pads. Um, our standard tan saxophone pads have about a four millimeter thickness, and these are good for any sort of modern instrument. Any instrument that's coming out of Asia um, in the past, I don't know, 30 years. Um, and so this pad is relatively firm. It's going to go in any sort of professional or uh, student instrument that you might have. And we, this is a lot of instruments uh, will accept this pad. Um, probably not cons, but modern instruments for sure. And then, so that's our standard tan sax pad. Uh, our next style that we have is called a soft feel tan sax pad. And you can see the difference in these uh, just by the backing that we use. So one of them uh, just says Music Medic, and the other one says Soft Feel on the back. And then we also have our Soft Feel Thick. And you can see the difference in the thicknesses between the regular and the thick. So here's the thick one. It's about 4.3. They might shoot up to 4.5 millimeters, and we can certainly make them in about a 4.5 millimeter thickness if you need a special order. The soft feel pads are, I don't know, it's, it's hard to tell when you just have them in your hands comparing. It's probably about 20 to 30 percent softer. Um, they are a more forgiving pad than the standard pad. So it's just depending on your working style and how you like to uh, do your padding. If you want a softer pad, the soft feel uh, is gonna be the same thickness as our standard tan saxophone pad. And then if you have you know, a vintage horn or if you like just thicker pads, um, the soft feel thick is gonna be a nice, um, you know, way to go for those who like a thicker pad and a softer pad. So that's our soft feel thick pad. And, you know, a note about price. Um, I think our price is probably 30% uh, less than our competitors on these. 
Well, there's a couple of more low-end manufacturers who have a great discount, and we're even 10% within their price. So if you haven't tried these pads, um, feel free to reach out to me, whether you want to send us a message or an email, and I'll be happy to send you uh, a sample of these pads so that you can see the quality and uh, kind of feel the leather and get that in your hands and then install them and see how they go. Um, all of these pads are made here at Music Medic. There isn't any woodwind pad that we don't manufacture here, so we have a lot of versatility and we have a lot of control over our stock, so I've never seen a back order of these in the last couple of years, probably. Um, so if you're, you know, if you're in your shop and you're thinking about trying a new pad, especially for your student instruments or your, um, your rental fleet, these are a good option for you. Now let's move on to the root pads. Um, the root pads are something that was developed, gosh, probably 20 years ago at this point. This is something that Kurt did. Uh, you know, I understand that they're Joey Gray pads and there are some other kangaroo leather pads, but the root pads were ones that we made popular over the years. And these pads feature the same felt and cardboard as the tan saxophone pads. And then they are clothed and wrapped in uh, kangaroo leather. Now the difference between the colors that you see here and the tan leather pads is these pads here are painted when they're finished to color them, and these uh, pads, or the leather for these pads, is dyed. So this is kind of the natural, uh, the natural-ish color of the, the, root, the root leather that we dye white, and then we also dye it kind of a chocolate brown. And so there's our chocolate root pad, and then we have our black root pad. So these three pads have basically about the same thickness as our uh, standard tan saxophone, you know, 4.1 to 4.2 millimeter thickness. And in terms of the way they feel, or if you have, you know, if you're a player and you're, and you're wondering the different thickness or the different feel of these, um, in general, the white root pads are going to hit the tone hole a little, you know, more quietly. Um, these are probably the least sticky pad of any pad in the world. Um, the, the black pads have a little bit more pop when they hit the tone hole. Over the years, I've really enjoyed playing the horns that we've set up with these. Um, they do have a little bit more pop. They're slightly, I don't want to say noisier, but they do have a little more... Um, uh, pop is the right word when it hits the tone hole. They're a little more percussive, yeah. Uh, and the chocolate brown, I would say, is a nice kind of in-between of these two. And, and I think that the reason that this happens is, or I know the reason that, happen, that this happens is, the way that the dye reacts with the leather kind of causes this, of, uh, this characteristic. So this dye makes the pad skin a little firmer, this dye makes it a little softer, and this is... Uh, in between. So if you want to get into root pads and you haven't, you know, tried them before, feel free to, uh, to reach out with us and we'll be happy to send you a sample. And I might start with the chocolate brown. Um, I think they're a nice uh, in between in terms of uh, feel between the, the white and the black root pads. Um, as far as non-stick goes, I would say these are the least sticky of pads of any saxophone pad. Um, and these, you know, in my opinion, are about the same. Um, all of these pads are pretty much non-stick, with these being the least non-stick. And of course, not any saxophone pad is 100% non-stick. Um, and then let's move on to one of the more innovative pads that we have. This is the Rupads Extreme. And the Rupads Extreme is constructed differently. So I, I just have a pad here that I've cut open. And let me just show you it. Uh, so with our Rupads Extreme, we have a synthetic felt that we use. And this pad, this felt doesn't care about water. You can run it under the faucet and it's not gonna change its tolerance in terms of its thickness. It's not gonna expand in any sort of moisture setting. It also likes to stay really flat. 
So that's a great benefit of this synthetic felt. And then we have our roux leather on top. And then because we know that roux leather is a little porous, uh, we like to put a leather, uh, a tan leather on top of the synthetic felt. So that seals this completely. We have our synthetic felt. And then depending on the type of thickness that you get, because the Rupaz Extreme are all available in, I think like three or four different thicknesses. Um, so if you want a really thick uh, pad, we do have an additional material that we put behind this that doesn't change the feel. So a lot of times, if you want to make a pad thicker, you might think that increasing the thickness of the cardboard will make it thicker, which is true, but it also makes the pads really hard. So one of the things that we developed over the, over the life of this product is to have a kind of flexible material that we use in between the, the backing and the felt to increase the thickness, but not sacrificing the feel. So these pads feel awesome. They also, in my opinion, seal up a little better than the roof pads. The roof pads, because they are a little more porous, they have a bit of a break-in period. So if you're doing an overhaul, you know, these pads will play, they play good, uh, uh, you know, and then if you have the player play for a little bit, the, you know, the player's natural juices, I'll say, uh, starts to get in there and it seals up the pads. And so, you know, for a player like me, I've used the white root pads and I've used them for probably 15, 16, 17 years before I switched to the Rue Extreme. Um, and what I would notice is when I would get my COAs done, that the pad, the horn would play really good and then I'd play it for a couple of days um, and then bring it back to the guys and they would do some additional padding and then it would play awesome. So we're thinking that, you know, with these pads, as the player works them in, just, you know, just within a few hours, the, the leather starts to seal completely and you have a no stick pad that seals and pops and responds really great. Now the other cool thing about the, the kangaroo leather, which I haven't mentioned before, is that this has a different cell cellular structure than the tan saxophone pad. And um, because of that, these pads are also have a little bit more, and I don't have the leather in front of me. I'll just take this pad and take it apart to show you. But with the marsupial species, their, their cell structure runs parallel to the surface. And I'm sorry, I don't have a diagram, but basically what that means is when they cut this leather to make it thin enough to, to wrap around a saxophone pad, the leather becomes a little stretchy, but it is still very strong. So it's incredibly difficult to tear. So these pads really last well, even on filed tone holes. Um, and let's see, where am I? We've got different leathers. The Rue Extreme also has that same leather. And, um, I wanted to show you, oh, right. Uh, so as a player, these pads versus, so I have the, the standard root pad and then the uh, root pads extreme. As a player, I would say the main difference, because there's two differences between these and two, uh, between these two. As a player, the root pads extreme are gonna pop as soon as you try the horn out. And I noticed that as soon as I got my horn overhauled with these. For the technician, the synthetic felt is a little more rigid. I wouldn't say it's a firmer felt than the uh, traditional, you know, woven felt that we use, but because they have a really nice feel when you run your fingers down the horn. Um, but these pads are a lot more uh, rigid. So when you're adjusting a extreme pad, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that your keywork is level, that your tone holes are level, because as you push on one side of the pad, it's really gonna to wanna to move the other side. Um, I'm just looking at Ryan to make sure that that's right. Uh, so there is kind of a little bit of getting used to these pads as a professional technician, 
but it's not that difficult if you're doing good key work and it's certainly something that the player is going to really appreciate. So I also have in front here, and I'm just gonna, so that's it for the pads, guys. If you have any questions about these pads, um, if you have any specific issues with them, or if you want to kind of get into some of these pads, stock them or see a sample, feel free to reach out with us, uh, uh, reach out to us with a comment or a question via email or send us a direct message and we can, um, you know, I'll be happy to send you a, a sample of any of these pads. And then I also wanted to show you uh, the root pads extreme and kind of uh, just run my fingers down this one so you can kind of uh, check out the pads a little bit. This is an overhaul that Ryan just is almost done with. And this con is something that we rebuilt and we were going to, uh, to talk a little bit about. Uh, for those of you who are watching now, does anybody want to actually have Ryan go over the mods he did on this? Um, this yeah. pad, or the pads in this con are the chocolate root pads extreme and I think they have the... Flat metal flat resin, metal. yeah. Oh, yes. really? Yes. So you decided to go all vintage with this. That's right, real vintage. Yeah, we like we like the flat metal resos when we're doing the doing the cons. Yeah, this was supposed to be a horn that we were supposed to do for our uh, Wednesday wisdom, or it was supposed to be the you know tune in at ten a.m. for the ten ten a.m. ten or talk of TCB and taking care of business for those of you that are unfamiliar with that phrase. Mm -hmm. Uh, but yeah, we did, we did quite a bit of modifications, um, starting at the top here. Um, we went ahead and removed the octave square. So it's a, a regular, um, there it is. <laughs> hey, Eric. Um, this is Eric's horn now. He just purchased it, but we removed the octave square here. We have Teflon here. Uh, so it's a lot smoother. As you can see in the top stack here, that front F we've actually changed to be a, a teardrop style front F. Um, on the back, both the back bars of the top stack and the bottom stack, we put adjustment screws in. Oh my so there you go. There's an adjustment screw there. There's an adjustment screw there. So these are super nice. Um, going to the, the other, uh, the G key here, we put in a, a contact uh, under the G key arm. So it's not going to get bent out of proportion. Uh, it's going to give you a nice firm feel. Same thing with the side keys. We added uh, side key contacts for the side B flat. And then the side C, so you get a nice firm feel. There's no flex when you play your side C and your side, uh, side B flat. And you can see we've made them to kind of match this original side E contact. That's awesome. um, so that's another nice feature. On the low C here, what we did, okay, cons usually have this butterfly clip that they use to hold their bumper felts. What we've done is we've removed that and we've added on a bumper holder on top of the pad cup. And what that allows us to do is actually open up this C pad cup, so the D is no longer stuffy. Nobody likes a stuffy D, oh, especially on a con. That's so, sweet, man. so that's real nice. The other thing you'll notice about this is we. Um, this is one of our silver plated specials here in the shop, and this was uh, actually re engraved, and we had extra engraving added on by Sherry Huntley. So she did a great job on this, and then I went and masked it off. We sandblast it. You can see around the, the naked lady, nice little sandblast outline there. Uh, sent it off, had it silver plated. You can see the gold wash bell. This thing is a killer. Wow. Yes, and it has, again, on top of that, it has the Rupat Extreme, uh, the chocolate Rupat Extreme, uh, which are just gonna, it, they're gonna last a long time and they're gonna give a great sound to this horn. Yeah, this, I mean, just in my initial play testing, Ryan, this horn uh, yeah. responded really, really well. I, as a player, I really thought that this was an excellent improvement. It's yeah. easy to jump up and hit the front F key. Um, yeah. So I like the feel of the pads, the way that the key work feels. I mean, it's super solid. Yeah. This is just an amazing, yeah, we, amazing. Thing. Yeah, we really, we really, we really missed out on our on our Wisdom Wednesday. We have some technical difficulties. So. Um, oh, but you yeah. tell them about the adjust, the F sharp adjustment. Oh, that's yeah, right. Yes, yes, that one too. Yes, I'm sorry. So we have we what we've added here on con, on this con is a um, an adjustable with adjustment screws F sharp armbar, and it's actually on a slider as well. Huh. Okay, so yes, Kurt's watching, Eric's watching, everybody's happy with this. This is a great horn. We did a lot to all new pearls. Uh, we made sure we, we we did a lot of angling with the t the pearls so it makes it feel nice. Same thing with the C and the E flat. Um, so everything is nice. Oh, the other thing about this, it has uh, gold-plated Musicmatic springs. 
So those are gonna look good and last quite a while. Yeah, there, you can see one hopefully right there. There we go, yes, nice gold-plated spring. So this is, this is great, this is a fantastic horn. And the key work is snappy. It is. You know, I think some people think that the gold springs don't have as much They sure, snap, certainly do have a lot of snap, yep. I don't really feel any sort of encumbrances as a player in terms of the spring tension already. And I'm sure you guys have some other adjustments that you're going to do or... Yeah, yeah, we're um, in the final stages of setting this up. It's going to head out most likely on Monday. Wow. Oh, yeah. So awesome. this, is, this, is, this is a great horn. Eric's going to be real happy with this. Definitely one of the best looking and, and probably one of the best playing 10Ms out there. Mm. Uh, I know I had a pleasure of working on it. So fantastic. Well, awesome. thank you guys for watching. Um, oh, we have one question here. Somebody asked, do you oh, use shrinking dies for the pearls or do we use adhesive? We use adhesive. Yes. Mm. So when we put the new pearls in, uh, we, we use um, a two-part epoxy that we sell, which really, really does a good job of holding the new pearls in. But yes. Cool. Yes, there we are. Any other questions or anything? I, I think that's it. I think they're all just in shock and awe seeing this, <laughs> seeing this fantastic horn. I am too. I'm a little speechless. Mm -hmm. I keep talking about it, but whoo. Well, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for tuning in and uh, watching all the different pads that we have. If you have any questions about these or anything else, feel free to reach out to us. If you'd like a sample of any of the pads that we talked about today, uh, feel free to contact me via email. Uh, give us a call, a message, a comment, and we'll be happy to send you a sample of any of the woodwind pads that we're making here at Music Medic. And Ryan, thanks for showing this yeah. bonus footage. Yeah, a little and extra for your Friday. This is how you start the weekend, folks, right That's here right. with the silver-plated Con 10M from the Sax Pro Shop and Music Medic with right. Rupad Extremes. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you again, yes. guys. Awesome. And we'll see you in the next one. All right.